Red, can you hear me? Anyone can hear me? Testing, testing. Testing, testing. Can anyone hear me? Red, I cannot hear you. I'm literally trying to start the stream and it's not doing it. So back to... Oh my, you guys do hear me.
You're muted, Tupa. That's actually the best note I've ever gotten. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Skyfire News Live, where we got all the UFO news kind of coming out daily, right? So this is where you're going to get everything from UFO clips to all the stuff coming out from News Nation, Ross Coulthard, all these insider names. We'll break everything down for you, too. Uh, Red, we got a show ahead of us today. Can you hear me? Yep. Red, you're coming through good. Cool. Woo! 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 <laughs> Let's go, dude. Got a new blue light behind me. Watch out. Watch out. Okay, so tonight we have a special guest. We have Alien Girl. Uh, she does her own podcast every morning. Basically, if you want to wake up with some coffee and UFOs, she's the person you go to, right? Uh, friend of the show. Early friend, friend of the show. show early supporter of Skyfire News. We love Alien Girl. We've both known her for a minute now. That's right. Yeah, a long in time. In the UFO YouTube community. Yeah, first show of the day. Exciting stuff. Oh, we're pumped. Woo! We're pumped. I mean, what an honor, dude, to be able to like watch these like streamers and whatnot kind of pop up out of nowhere and then stay consistent. And then now we get to have them on our show. I mean, it's kind of kind of nice because we have a lot of stuff to break down. The UFO topic is super confusing, especially now we have press conferences. We got special committees, select committee. I mean, it goes on and on forever, dude. So like we got to have somewhere to digest it. And this is the, this is the spot. We got some great people in the chat, too. What's up, chat? Good to see you guys here. You guys have been super supportive this whole week. Yeah, let's we get this thing out. started. Spark Zap Zach, Girls Happy Toad, Buddy James, woo! Alien Girl hopping on soon. Uh, UFO intros. Uh, who else we got? JK Philly fan, Anthony Jones, Skinny yes. Bob with the Here We Go. Skinny Bob. Zach, how's it going? Deaf Space, Tipster's Chair, Zim. Uh, Dude, we love Zim. Zim's a friend of the show. Average He's Chris, Lou Elizondo's in the chat, everyone. Woo! Lou Elizondo, woo! We got Megan in there, dude. Lou Elizondo. Lou, Lou, Lou is a really, a really fun surprise. We like having you here, Lou, even if you're fake. Uh, if Amy is here, I am. I love that. I love that support. You know, the UFO community is uh, it's supportive, but at the same time, I think a lot of people are vying for the same narrative control or something. So you see a lot. There's like a lot of back and forth, a lot of like factions that you wouldn't expect to have since we're all kind of feeling around in the dark. But it is what it is. Oh, look at, there's the little on in the chat. Always here for Amy. Love to see that. Aww. Oh, Love we got B. I don't know if you gave B a shout out. What's up, B? Good to see you. Oh, and B. Yep. Um. All right. Okay. Let's, without further ado, let's bring our guest on. All right. Here we go. This is Amy Alien Girl. What is up? What is up? Hey guys, thank you so much for letting me come on Skyfire News. I'm super excited to be here. We have all sorts of amazing things to talk about, and I'm like, you know, huge friends and fans of you. And this one thing that's wonderful about being in this amazing field is not it, like I really love talking to content creators, obviously, because we're friends. <laughs> and so, it's just I'm really excited that we get to hang out on a stream and like videos, and it's not Twitter spaces. And I'm <laughs> um, just ready to dive into all. All the ufo stuff that's going down so thank Absolutely. you so much for having me skyfire news rules yes Hell thank yeah. you and thanks for paving the way you've been streaming forever yeah. like what got you <laughs> into streaming your show as opposed to like doing radio or just audio or something why'd you get into this at all well coronavirus oh yeah okay and before <laughs> oh well but ooh, back up in time i didn't say that but like you know i was stuck in my house a lot like a lot of us were in 2020 mm -hmm. sorry i'm gonna try to self-censor i'm is I youtube, to say is that YouTube, word. Is YouTube still punishing people who say ovid or whatever like do we have to i don't know do we have to, <laughs> do we have to spread to it out good guest chat if try you guys know pop guest. it in there we want to know but for now, you're good. Speak freely, Amy. You're good. Well, I was in my home during the pandemic in 2020, yeah. and I, yeah. I was very. I had an interest in um in making YouTube videos, and I was crafting a lot. I used to have an Etsy shop for like five years, and so I had like a little YouTube channel that I was doing things, and I do little crafty things and whatever. And then, um, like the week that coronavirus happened, I made a face mask video, and it got like a hundred thousand views. And I was like, "That's wild, right?" And it was like the first taste oh. I had of something trending, and then. And like nothing really ever after that so much but like i've always had wow. an interest in what a UFOs. crazy first uh mm -hmm. viral thing to happen chasing that high mm -hmm. forever now <laughs> the, the <laughs> bit. i don't have a hundred thousand of it that's epic yeah it was a diy face mask with uh hair ties um uh, made it like april 13th something like not april but like a week after um a week after lockdowns like i was locked down in my house like everybody else for like a week 
yeah and that video just hit and then like there was a crazy wave of people on the internet like it it was a time when everyone was socializing on the internet right like it's died down so much but at that point it was just crazy the amount of socializing that was happening online Mm -hmm. um yeah and it's died down quite a bit because now we can all leave our houses so it was a big socializing thing and yeah then slowly it's just turned into like something i do creatively it's an art for me it's the way i express myself creatively um learn different skills do different things and it's worked out to my advantage more than often people might see it as just like oh this silly show but there's a lot of skill sets i've built and things that have helped me in my own life um way outside of ufo so it's content creation the, yeah. that's the passion that's the passion really that's awesome and you've been at it and i always respect people that are just boom and you're the first one of the day like tupa said everyone go check her out you wake up early you're like a different time zone than me so you're like super early for me. super oh, early i remember i woke up one time before the sun came up and i go oh i know what i'm doing and i i caught the very end like last two minutes of her show and i'm like okay i gotta be way 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 early i usually honestly i'll see it a lot of times like if i'm up super late i'll like fall asleep to it yes yes that's where i am but it's a great thing to go back and rewatch. I mean, it's awesome. And the topics you cover, the way you do it, uh, this community needs as many voices as possible. So if you're out there and you got one, create a channel. Let us know what you guys think, dude. Um, I'm loving the ability today to see the comments. What do you Chat, think, you Alien writing. Girl, right? So we've been in this UFO game, you and I mm-hmm. and Tupa here yes. for a minute. Isn't it crazy how much news there is all the time now? I, I do like believe you, so. Mm-hmm. From when you even first started, right? You're still post-2017. You're 2020. That's a little post 2017 but still like it's crazy how much news there is like every day in this thing well i remember when i first started covering it and i would do ufo and google news search and wait for everything to come up and sometimes there literally would be nothing going on except like a a farmer would go and do like an accidental loop in a cornfield right (laughs) and leave like a figure eight or whatever um but yeah i and i used to be that super into mars like super into nasa mars i did a lot of videos about that really deep in right um and so yeah and so once i started getting into that then the ufo thing really did start exploding at a level that it is every single day there is a new headline in ufos that either two people are disagreeing or the government mm-hmm. saying it's not happening or there's like another whistleblower that's coming out that just came out today um it was reported in the daily mail that you know this they had found a saucer and the occupants had left by foot i don't know i'm talking about it tomorrow but it happens every day and it's so in people's faces and i think it's like it's going it's it always has felt like it's going to happen but it's it's on full throttle now especially with the aaro saying like oh none of it was real that i think that just threw me like i used to be like oh i'm kind of skeptical after that i'm like no it's all real all of it like i'm just gonna go all at it i'm gonna pause you real quick (laughs) i think we are super close to this topic and we often hear about things and it's easy for it to to kind of roll off our backs right but you just said bodies strewn about like crashes uh and you, daily mail what article is this because we all want to know about the crashes we want to know about the bodies like that's for sure what's going on so uh yeah. what is that case that you're talking about most definitely let me pull it up real quick awesome. um it was an article that was um, i know a little bit Sharp about it too. came out with it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and actually mm-hmm. it might be cool it's frank milburn it's it's kind of a trust frank. me bro mm-hmm. it's kind of a trust me bro story frank mm-hmm. Mil- yeah frank milburn was in the daily mail article Break down who Frank Milburn is, Red. That'd be awesome. Good idea. He's a special forces British um, paratrooper. He's really interested in UFOs. Really fascinating, actually, Tupa, in your space when you were doing nine-hour spaces every day. Those are the days. He he hopped in like the day Amy Eskridge died Uh, in like 2022, and that was a super heavy one. I actually recommend everyone go listen to that space. That was very interesting. If you're interested in the Amy Eskridge story at all, go listen to Tupa's space where Frank Milburn, because he was close friends with her. He was talking about all her speaking from the heart too, like, Mm -hmm. and that she was like getting attacked by like psychotronic weapons and whatnot. Pretty wild stuff. But uh, yeah, so basically, this article that came out, and we'll probably just touch on a little bit here. Maybe we could do more tomorrow. Pull up the pictures, but um, basically, Frank Milburn had said he had heard from a guy that he had served with or something like that that there was crash retrievals, right? Alien girl, is that how you understand it? Yeah, what basically like he had said that. They had found recent UF whistleblower claims that there was a crash retrieval. The UK ministry had denied at, like any sort of knowledge about it. Um, yeah. And so this paratrooper, he basically said that they saw 
and they they saw beings. They said they saw entities running away. I mean, it's just it's just fascinating because a new whistleblower comes out all the time. And yeah, this is a trust me bro story, but like mm -hmm. I don't know, like a mountain of trust me bro stories actually kind of get you to be like, well, what? Wow, what? That? That's a lot of trust me bros. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Chat, how many trust me bros does it take to become significant for what we're paying attention? Is it three, four? Because right now, I think this week we've seen trust me bros from people who I didn't expect to see it. Right, journalist Ross Coldheart from Australia. He dropped when he got kind of roasted for that. Right. He's like, listen, like if you guys have seen what I've seen, and you know, like as if it, implying that he saw a craft or he saw bodies or he saw paperwork that not a lot of people are privy to. That's what we're looking for. Right. So a lot of people got on his back about that. Like, look, we don't need more trust me, bros. We need that information. Like, let it out. Amy, how effective for you is the trust me, bro stuff? So does is it a, a deterrent or does it actually get you excited still? Well, I think the more information that comes my way, the more it becomes quantifiable, right? If somebody comes up to you and says, there's an alien in my backyard, you're not going to immediately be like, well, well, let's go look at it or whatever. But if multiple people start coming up to you and say there was an alien in my backyard and there's no proof and more and more and more people start saying that. And even if you take that example and you put it into another, the more people that come out and say, you know, I saw somebody told me they saw a flying saucer or somebody said this happened, like that is totally legitimate, especially when there's multiple claims from all sorts of different angles. Yeah, could they have been paid off by some defense company to set this all up so it's all dominoing effect? Yeah, they could, but more than likely, these are like legitimate human beings just like you and I. They have families, jobs, they're trying to keep everything, you know, together. Why would they risk their whole lives and everything that they've worked so hard on for some alien story? Seriously. That's, a good that's point. the last thing people are going to risk their lives on like they just it's ridiculous to everyone this this is a ridiculous topic to bring up you are the and now that the aaro has said that it's total bs now we're in a situation where we're kicked down we're kicked down to the curb again it's just back to where it was it's back to where it was. You, it's just the stupidest topic to talk about again now. You're you're completely unintelligent. Like, this is how a lot of people think, right? Like, they just don't want to see the yeah. facts. They don't want to look at the evidence. They get, like, tired or bored with information. And <laughs> yeah. so they want to, like, dust it off. And you're like, no, the proof is here. You know, but they're not as interested in all of us. And it's not bad to not be interested in this topic. It's not a flaw or anything. It just happens to be the topic that we're all interested in. True. <laughs> Uh, what, what what roadblocks do you run into when you're talking to normies about this? Like oh, when just, you see their eyes oh. glaze over, like I, it's such a big. It, be, it has become so big, not big. Like I don't talk about it. It's definitely like secret. It's a secret when you meet me, and then you figure it out somehow. <laughs> just got to keep it hush hush. So well, you don't want to scare like... people off. <laughs> no. You know, you really don't like. No. But now, obviously, since 2017, this topic has gotten much easier to talk about other people, right? And we're talking, of course, about the New York Times article. Leslie Keen drops this UAP article about crash retrieval programs and all kinds of stuff. Uh, if you were there, it was a magical moment. It was crazy. And it, the world has been different ever since. Uh, oh, 100%, I ask, yeah. I ask people this sometimes uh, since we started the show three days ago. Uh, what grade would you give disclosure if you had to give mm. it a grade so yes. far? Well, I felt bad. I think somebody said B. I think Red said B, B plus, something yeah. like that. I said C minus, and you said D minus. Big old D, minus. dude. Ashton said C F minus. 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 Yeah, Ashton has no, he does not like what's going on. He said no. <laughs> That's good, F minus. I didn't even hear that. That's hysterical. Yeah, I'd say C minus for me. And I, 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 I grade on a curve. Yeah, so a C minus. That's fair. Mm -hmm. That's fair. What's the best thing you've seen so far from it? And what's like the, the, the stuff that's kind of holding it back for you? Um, well, the best thing I thought personally was Rush coming forward on July 26th and saying that there was the bodies in the craft. Now, after that, I was like, game on. <laughs> it is a, it's a crazy thing. Uh, so Grush is not yet a household name for everyone. Right. But he is a super important figure. Guys, if you're paying attention to ufology and you've heard this name, Grush, we're talking about a whistleblower, someone who went and testified before Congress, who's been interviewed by, I mean, now what is it? Countless shows, who's part of a foundation, um, uh, the Soul Foundation. He's getting involved in private companies, private industries, trying to get the word out. He's a very earnest dude. I would love the chance to talk to him. I know Redwood as well. Uh, I, you know, like 
and the, the work red produces i'm sure has had like you know it echoes in time with this stuff because anybody can access it but grush is out there doing these interviews uh he's saying that he is aware of crash retrieval programs bodies what did he call them what's the famous word biologics non biologics non-human biologics were found on the craft uh a lot of a lot of breadcrumbs that cause us to like our eyes to, to get bigger but we're still looking for the proof of that stuff right Oh, yeah. I mean, we're looking for the proof all the time. Mm. Uh, but what David Grush did when he came forward and he started talking about that in front of all of these people, it becomes very apparent, especially when you look at this photo. Thank you so much, Red, for putting this up. You that see that he's clutch. between George Knapp and Jeremy Corbell. Like there isn't some sort of like holy trinity to that. There's not only that, but you look on the right, you got Fravor, you know, you look on the left, you got, I don't know why my mind's blanking, but Graves. Graves, yes, Graves. But so the whole thing is, is I think Grush was definitely picked for this role. This was a man who was picked to do this role. There were many candidates who had heard whisperings and murmurs in the Capitol building or wherever they were, <laughs> wherever they were, like, you know, in places they vote. Um, but like, right, but they chose Grush. How do we know there's a lot there's this guy holding the blue folder he's important i don't know if anybody remembers why there's this other guy with the blue tie he's very important i forget why Jack Ryan um, is back there too yeah red give us give us the breakdown of who we're seeing here man like these guys yeah so we got uh real quick we got ryan graves who was a pilot uh attached i think to the flight group that got the go fast and gimbal thing he wasn't like the person who saw it over here we got fravor uh, on the right there, we got Fravor, Commander David Fravor, Commander David Sex Fravor. Uh, he was what, part of the Tic Tac. The Tic Tac sighting, right? He was flying the ship with Alex Dietrich, or flying the ship, sorry, flying the uh, jet. He was flying the other jet. Yes. Uh, yes. So, yeah, this is just the day of the hearing. And, yeah, like Alien Girl said, we have George Knapp in the background. We have Jeremy Corbell. I suspect Cor um, Grush and other UAPTF members were leaking Corbell and Knapp, these kinds of things, and kind of helping push the conversation that way. I'd assume that's why they were there and invited and whatnot. I, I'm pretty sure Nick Gold is in this photo somewhere, friend of the show. But friend I of the show, Nick Gold, great might voice. Be just out of, uh, just out of, the, just out of the, frame. Yeah, yeah. Poor guy. Well, there's a lot of familiar faces back there, though. If you guys are into UFO Twitter, you might recognize some people back there. A lot of people made it in. Um, yeah, and real quick, uh, I have. Uh, Finish it on this, and then I have another question for Alien Girl before we get into the news. Well, I'm really glad we made this a, like a whole thing. It was a side joke. Uh, what didn't make it into the hearing was a tie on Jeremy Corbell. So good luck there, Jeremy. <laughs> LOL. Okay, cool. So then uh, real quick, last thing we, I want to cover real quick with Alien Girl before we just get into the news. Uh, you've met some interesting people in ufology. Well, just I want to hear what was it like meeting these two people. So first, we got Jaime Maussan. Woo! Woo! The number one ufologist in Latin America and who recently got a million subscribers on YouTube and is pushing the mummies hard. People love him. People hate him. He's yes. controversial. What, what was it like meeting Jaime? He's such a gentleman. Muy bueno. I, he helps me with my vibe. Spanish. <laughs> I get that vibe, dude. He's he likes Skyfire News too. He's he retweets us like all the time. So shouts out, Jaime. Cool. Yeah, he's super professional. Uh, people might not know of his work so much the way that the Spanish speaking countries of the world do, but you know, he is a world renowned ufologist he's just i just don't think he's had as much exposure he has more exposure on youtube which is something obviously that i've always gravitated towards if anything was on youtube about ufos i've probably seen it so Jaime had a lot of influence in youtube <laughs> back in the day in youtube uh, so i don't know I, and i loved he had these angel footage that i love watching yeah you know but yeah he's he's my he's my Jaime. he's Jaime Musan. he's like honestly, a sweetheart dude he's people i mean I was on Tupac this the other day too. Maybe it's because I'm Hispanic. I really don't even do like the race thing really like that. But I do like to see a Latin king winning. You know what I mean? Yes. He's he's done a lot. He helped organize whether you love the mummies, hate the mummies. He helped organize that conference in Mexico, the or the political one. Uh, he's a. Uh, <laughs> I like him. I know people love to hate him. UFO Shane, if he was here, he would be cussing me out right now. Oh, we would. Uh, he would be so triggered right now about us talking about moose moose on right but yeah think, matt danger in the chat dude is a confirmed hoaxer come on guys tell it like it is how many what, hoaxes did he say like uh, shane has 48 like a list. and counting yeah 48. but also what you gotta understand too what i've heard people say is uh he's like the guy in latin america so like 
of course he's going to get hit with stuff. I mean, how many people that we, that Matt Danger probably loves have like fallen for a hoax at some point in time. You know what I mean? Very true. I mean, if you're in the game long enough, you're going to get caught slipping because there's so many different hoaxers and it's not just like random guys who are trying to grift. It's also, I think a lot of government fake stories that get put out and that lead people astray from stuff. So he's been around for a minute and I got to say this dude. And like you said, right? Like I'm not, you know, we're not over here being super like, uh, you know, inclusivity. It's just a thing where like, American ufology has a cultural problem. It has a language problem. Like we need to 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 bring more people in and stop being so closed in. Like it just it's an issue. We need to become more multicultural. We need to become a little bit bigger because everyone out there has ideas and words. And I think like we're so elitist over here. You know what I mean? Like and so just one yeah, of those like if it's not happening in America and disclosure. It's not happening. Exactly. Kind of like, exactly. Yeah. Uh, real quick, we got a super chat, and now we like I said, we're set up on stream merit. So oh, shout out, buddy James. Funny. He says, like, subscribe, and share. Yeah. Let's go. Skyfire News. So, yeah, everyone do what he said. Like, subscribe, share. <laughs> uh, For cool. real, though, like like this channel, guys. Follow it if you guys don't. I mean, we're interviewing people. Like, we got Alien Girl in here today. We had Bedded in here yesterday. Uh, we're trying to do the most out here on YouTube. So, if you guys want to see more news often give us a like uh go to twitter give us a follow um and buddy james thank you so much for the support bro we appreciate it yeah we'll leave that up for a little bit um all right next one we have uh let's see can you guess <laughs> oh yeah yeah i know you know it's gonna be my, right. my other buddy my other Your buddy. other buddy yeah. Lil Sondo, friend of the it's show my <laughs> it's my husband <laughs> <laughs> that's so, so that's so cool Chupa, That's tell the people who is Lou Elizondo, and then we'll hear what it was like for Alien Girl to meet Lou. All right, so Lou Elizondo came out into the UFO scene a little bit after the article came. I think he was named in it, and he basically was uh, he gave himself the title director of the ATIP program of UA UFO kind of retrieval information gathering uh, program within the U.S. government. Uh, he came out and brought all the information he has uh, to it. He gave interview after interview after interview. Some of them were more cryptic than others, but a lot of it was dropping information. A lot of my earlier work, and I know Red included this too, is about Lou Elizondo. He was out there dropping the, the most information out of anybody. Like if you've heard about the modern UAP movement since 2017, you've probably heard about Lou Elizondo, even if you don't recognize his name or his face, you might have. But in the UFO community, he's uh, gilded God status just because of the, the access he has, the position he says he held, and the uh, the way in which he conveys this information to and us. And he has so, helped bring it to the, the mainstream. Love him or hate him. True. People know how we feel about him here. We love him, friend of the show. He's in the live chat. Look at looking good. Yeah, you are looking yeah, good that day. You are looking good. The day. <laughs> so this was actually the 75th anniversary of the UFO Roswell crash in the in the Roswell UFO Museum. Um, and like so this is actually literally the middle of the museum. And this was such a surreal moment because his wife took the photo of us. And actually, like to my left is Robert Salas, to my right is Travis Taylor. Whoa. Right behind me is Alejandro Rojas is like taking photos of me and Lou. I don't even <laughs> like, and then I don't ever heard back. Like, I, I, I don't know. Alejandro Rojas, those guys from UFO bros were in the room. Tom Reed was there. It was just like this. <laughs> those are fun. Yeah. Those are big names. Seven, you go to a lot of conferences too, right? I feel like conferences um, are a fun vibe. Are you yeah, sure? Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been, I've been to, been to, uh, yeah, I've been to a, the coolest. There's been so many. I just try to follow wherever my UFO heart takes me, <laughs> and I just have so much fun. I dork out about, you know, I dork out about it all. I just, I have so much fun. Um, especially meeting Lou Elizondo was really cool. He was super kind. Um, you know, we, I, I, I told him a little joke. I was like, "Are you a spy?" <laughs> I did so many funny things and and he was really sweet though. He gave my daughter like a STEM talk mm -hmm. and talked about, you know, being in the military and it was really cool. Um, I feel like he's great in situations like this. I feel like he's yeah. probably like Jaime, right? They're charmers. They're, they know how to, yeah. they know how to work the crowd. They're not Jack Sarfati, like calling you an idiot or something like that. You know? Yeah. They're well, not that, they're not that jaded or, or old yet. You know what I mean? At like, least in, at least in uh, <laughs> interactions like this, maybe that was on. And like, you have to things. admit, Jaime and Lou Elizondo have huge followings. You know, you don't get huge followings like that without being charming. Honestly, yeah. it is hard to charm thousands and thousands and thousands of people that way. Tell us, tell us about, you know, it. 
Do you storm <laughs> dust? <laughs> we storm like, like we don't know, right? I'm all like, you know, it's really. Raise your hand if you've been personally charmed by Lou Elizondo at one point in time. I have. <laughs> I still am today. Yeah, he's still got, he's still got the charm, dude. He hasn't lost that, dude. That's what's great. It's actually you're right. He still kind of does. He isn't even doing anything. And people in the chat know how we feel about him. But uh, still, I'm like, I don't want to believe it. He's so charming. <coughs> yeah, I still think about the stuff that he said with his like little soliloquy or whatever. Uh, I still think about that. But <laughs> the whole like understand. everything you knew is going to change. What if you sat down and your parents are like, we're, you don't come from where you come from. Like God's like, it was, a, it was intense. Yeah, you guys quotes. I still think about Chains of the Sea all the time, which is like, I would have oh, known about without him. Chains of the Sea. I'm going to introduce that to the audience if that's cool. So Chains of the Sea is a book. It's kind of a novella that was in, in a group of other kind of short sci-fi stories. Came out in like, I think 78. And uh, Chains of the Sea was a specific story in that, in that group of stories. And it's about um in the future very very near future nothing there's no flying cars uh but aliens land that's the, in the first paragraph no spoilers but it's the first literally it's the first sentence aliens land and we can't communicate with them and the story focuses about how the artificial intelligence of the military begins to break down the language of these beings these aliens to decipher what they want uh and the story kind of explodes from there and it's one of the best like i said like red said we still think about that all the time like it's a big deal so chains of the sea go check that out if you haven't yet yeah yeah all right well that was very cool uh hopefully i meet you at a conference one day are you, are you going to maybe go to contact in the desert i am i'm going to be going to contact in the desert for just a wee bit i might just stop by for a day or two but i'll be definitely zipping through and shaking some trees <laughs> heck yeah nice <laughs> nice nice well uh That'll be fun. I think people are going to go. A bunch of people are going to go. A bunch of people in chat are going to go. Um, hey, uh, give me a one in the chat if you're going to contact in the desert. We'll be sure to look out for you guys over there. Are you guys going too? Yeah. Oh, we can't miss sure. it. We can't. Skyfire News nice. can't miss the contact in the oh desert. Dude, there's no you way. You guys are going to be there too? There's no way. We're, we're <laughs> this is the it. magic. This is the spirit journey that never ends. It is. <laughs> I mean, we want to bring, We our goal is to bring the UFO topic to everyone. If we're not out there covering this stuff, I mean, I mean, on, if you guys want us to cover more events, let us know. But like, look at Lou Elizondo in the chat. He's going. Hell yeah. There we contact go. Contact in Lou. the desert. Nice. Lucy. See you there, bud. Sweet. Nice. <laughs> Very cool. I love how connected you are, Alien Girl. The fact that you go out there and you do rub these shoulders with these people is great. Like, you know, I would I would kill to meet Lou or like, you know, even get a picture with Jaime. Like those are those are things you just really, you know, I mean, it's once in a lifetime type stuff. I strategize so cool. it. I That's pick cool. who I want to go talk to and I like make sure I think of something really, 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 really cool to say. Nice. <laughs> so like Bryce Zabel, I said to him, You look so familiar. I really need to know your name. <laughs> And he was like, Bryce Sable. And I was like, I already knew that. Get it? Need to know podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and he liked it. He remembered me. And um, it was so weird because he took this picture of himself by a UFO in Santa Fe. And I like, like replied to his tweet. And I was like, look, here I am at the same UFO in Santa Fe. So I just have fun with it. Oh, right? it was like a, like a mock UFO. Yeah, it was like a fake. It, it was like a UFO, UFO art. Selfie. Like, okay, no, they're everywhere here. There's like, ev there's everywhere. There's like an alien flying saucer sculpture or something that you can stop by. So, like, you know, it might not have been the one in Santa Fe, but we both went to the one in Santa Fe. Hey, um, did you did you happen to see the Mothman statue in Pennsylvania? Got a tramp oh. stamp. Someone put it. Someone put a tramp stamp above. Oh, what? <laughs> Wasn't it like a week That's after crazy. Lou was there too? I think Dude, so. it might have been Lou. It was full tribal. Yeah, I'm gonna find it real quick. Give me a second. But yeah, it was it was great. Oh it was God. it was literally a week after uh, Lou was there. Here, yeah, you pull up that. And I'll pull up Lou there, and then we'll move on to the next segment. Mothman. Oh right, he went to the Mothman. I remember Lou tweeting that. <laughs> right. So Let's point see how long pleasant. The... If you guys don't know what Mothman is, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna give a little bit of a breakdown just real quick because I mean, hell, dude, what a, what a wild thing. Uh, back, I think it was the 60s. I could be totally wrong. We'll get the dates better. But essentially, there was a flap. A flap is a series of localized UFO sightings or paranormal events. So uh, there was a flap in Point Pleasant, uh, Pennsylvania, right? And uh, a lot of people were seeing a cryptid. Right. It started out with with kids out on like make out lanes and whatnot. They began seeing this giant bird insect like thing with red glowing eyes. And it was like 
coming after them. It would chase cars. It would land on the hood. It would be outside of people's houses when they looked outside. And so people began like kind of gathering this data. It was going on for about a year. And at the peak of it, what happened was a bridge collapsed in that town, killing, I don't know, upwards of 40 people, injuring so many more. And a lot of people were getting premonitions of cataclysmic events before the thing. So I guess the working theory now is that Mothman might have been a, some type of cryptid or an alien or some type of creature um, warning of impending doom. And in Point Pleasant, they celebrated this paranormal event with the statue of Mothman. And that's what we're seeing here right now with Lou. Very yeah. cool. beautiful. That's beautiful. And then do you I love it for the uh, tramp stamp. The tramp stamp. Okay, one wow. second. I gotta, I gotta go. I gotta really go through. I can uh, find it. I took a little break to explain what Mothman was. I, I should have been looking look. for it while you did that. We're <laughs> still learning episode three. Episode three. Uh, but th this is a really good picture of Lou. Look at this patriot. And he Lou. looks great. He looks great. I just love him out there celebrating the paranormal cryptids, man. So Mothman. Hmm. Skinwalkers. So, hmm. so Lou Elizondo was standing in front of Mothman in November, right? And then just a few short months later, all of a sudden, <laughs> Mothman has a tram stamp. I think maybe he went to Vegas or had a little too much to drink with his friends, and then he wakes up, and he, first of all, he's a little caked up. I mean, that's kind of cool. Oh yeah, it's cool. It's like it's it's like kinda, it's kind of classy. <laughs> it's not that bad. I mean, tasteful. It's, a tasteful it ruin. Stamp. I'm not accusing Lou Elizondo of anything here, but it is a fun. fact. That Lou Elizondo took a picture in front of Mothman, and then the next time I see Mothman, he has a tramp stamp. I mean, it, it looks good. I want a good. one in the chat if you think there's a, if you did Lou put that on there. <laughs> yeah, one in the chat if Lou right. put the tramp stamp on Mothman. Two in the chat if no. Two in the chat if uh, Mothman was way more caked up than you thought, dude. Like, I think w whoever designed the statue was really interested in the anatomic anatomically correct aspect of it. Very strange. We're getting a lot of ones in the chat. People are suspicious. Lou yeah. said he didn't do it in the chat. Oh, uh, Lou said he didn't do it. Okay. Oh, uh, well, Lou said the number two. two. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a counter intel dude. You can't just. All right. That's what he would say. Lou would right, say so, that. I think for the <laughs> next segment, one? it was kind of a. Uh, and it, earlier in the chat, too, people were, were speaking about this. It was kind of a heavy day on UFO Twitter and here at Skyfire News. Uh, UFO Shane, who's part of this, uh, and hopefully we'll get him on more streams coming up here soon. His rabbit died. Uh, Steve, the rabbit. Um, Sad. So, yeah. Uh, I know that rabbit meant a lot to him. So, rest in peace, Steve. Rest in peace, Steve. Uh, in a heart, Shane, heart I know, a Shane. I know Steve is proud of where you are, where you come from, where you're gone, where you're going. He was there for Steve. Or Steve was there for Shane for a lot of Shane's character growth and development. And, yeah, it's very sad. I hope he and said our, he's... Our, our furry yeah. friends, they mean so much to us, too. You know, they really I mean? do. So we really got our we, we we that hit us hard, hit the whole community hard. I think we like yeah. I think we love Steve more than we realized, you know. Maybe and even we, more than Shane. No, I'm just kidding. no, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way. Shall we play the shall we play the clip? Yeah, play the play the thing you made. All right, guys. Yeah. This one goes out to Steve and to Shane. And when my light comes for me, I hope I see. I'll have to remember But this dirt road that I'm on Was always better Than you, I love you, Steve Damn. Honestly, I'm not even saying this for like memes or trolls. I was legitimately sad today when I learned about that. Oh, I've yeah. been sad about like that for an animal, I think. In Hearts minute. in the chat for Steve. And Aww. obviously for Shane. We're all moving. Poor Shane. Bad. Poor Shane. Poor Steve. Mm -hmm. well, well, well taken care of rabbit over there. You know, all the lettuce a rabbit could ask for. Some dollar bills, too. I mean. All right. Well, then the let's day. power through some news. Okay. Now. 
All right, please, Steve, pour one out for Steve if you're drinking tonight, if you're smoking tonight. <laughs> Uh, let's get to some of the some more UFO news popping. Like we said, every day there's stuff breaking, and every day, Monday through Friday, we cover it here on Skyfire News. And Alien Girl does too. You're Monday through Friday, right? Monday through Friday, when I feel like it, you know, sometimes I sleep in. <laughs> but yeah, for the most part, it's pretty consistent. Yeah, I don't ever really miss a show. But if I do, I do, you know. Yeah, I'm hoping, like, I feel like I've heard you talk about how, like, you, like, it helps structure your life a little more. I'm hoping that happens here with me. <laughs> yeah, actually, it does. Um, it's really actually one of the big reasons I haven't quit it. <laughs> <laughs> like, you have these routines and things that you do. So if I don't do the show in the morning, everyone's like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> like, because they don't even know about the show. But if I don't do it in the morning, then Why? I go start my day. People are like, are you okay? <laughs> so it's something that I kind of have to do. Plus, um, you know, if it's your fun time and you're kind of getting a nice release and having fun with it and yeah, yeah. And then every day you wake up and your same friends or, you know, in the afternoon, you go and your friends are there. My buddies, you know, people I've known for years. I've got some people in the live chat who I've known for 15 years, I think. Damn. Yeah. Like whenever, whenever the YouTube chat, like just so many friends over all the years and it's just um it's just cool like i go on and i don't know who's gonna jump in and say good morning right yeah be, like i just so it's the awesome. friends like you guys and and like meeting all these people like you were saying like meeting jaime meeting lou that's the freaking cool part about it i don't know what i'm gonna do next i i didn't i, I didn't think i was gonna go to contact two months ago it's always like something new is put on my plate and it's like why don't you go to this and i'm like i guess i'll step on forward and so far that that's that's uh that's why i've kept going so that too so but um i'm happy you guys are doing it daily i'm super excited to watch every single episode <laughs> you know because there's there's not too many daily streamers um the like with at least ufos or you know and there's i know some of them go you know christina goes like three times a week christina gomez um and then you've got my friend rich goes five times a week no six times rich goes six times strange recon jeff he goes he's back he took a he's break for like yes so he goes you know and so it's kind of cool when we get like the daily streamers it's like yeah because <laughs> yeah. in my mind it's like the, the moment is now it's not yesterday it's not a pre-record and i know youtube doesn't really give love to long form live videos they don't if they did if they did, like, it would be different. I, if I didn't like doing live, I would do short form UFO videos, right? Like short form, because those get better, that'll get better hits or whatever. But, you know, anyway, but yeah, the point being is I'm just, you guys are doing great. This is an amazing show. I got like, I was super excited to see the first episode. I'm beyond honored and humbled to be here. You guys are like two of the greatest voices I think you guys have so many amazing things to say about it. And like, I, I guess I gravitate towards your dialogue because it's finally somewhere where I'm like, I pick up something from Tupa or I pick up something from red or in, or in your spaces, right? Like I'm not, I'm not like floundering with information. I'm not fighting or doing personal attacks. Like we're having like, yeah. you're like, Amy, but did you check this out? And I'll be like, no, you're full. And I'll look at it and I'll be like, well, I guess you're right. And <laughs> And I like that, right? Like, that's a really cool energy to be around because, you know, so I'm just excited. This is going to be amazing. Thank you. Thank you. And guys, after you like and subscribe this to this channel here and hit your notifications on, go do that for Amy or for Alien Girl. Go, go do it, right? We're going to leave that in the in the description, her link uh, right there. We actually got it in the comp. Mm, I love this. I love being able to just to pull this off. Check out the comments. Go down there and set those notifications on for, for Alien Girl. Right. It's good to have these voices in the mix um, because some of this stuff is so convoluted. Right. It's like we want to get the information digested from actual human beings. Right. Like it's, it's vital. It's vital. Um, but we got another news story to get to. All right. So we're going to get over All to right, it. Let's get it. Let's get into the news. Into the news. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's for you, Keem. Let's do it. Let's slam dunk it. Where's this news at? I do the space jam up in here. You want to introduce mm -hmm. the next clip? I think we're going with uh, special committees. What Let's just watch of? it. Cool. Let's Here just we go. watch it and then talk about it. Something along those lines, right? There would be a lot more. Whoops. Joe, what does it mean to have a UAP select committee as distinct from it just being talked about in one of the normal subcommittees of the House Oversight Committee? 
Real quick, real quick. This is Ross Colthart. Ross is a journalist from Australia who has been focusing like a hound dog on the UFO topic. I don't know if there's more researchers, more reporters out there who have as much access, who have as much information, who have as much tenacity as reach. Ross Colthart. As reach. I mean, he's connected. He's the guy you want to listen to on some of this stuff. And now he's doing segments with News Nation. He's still in the mix. He's boots on the ground, all that stuff. And he reports it on video so we get to talk about it. So that's why he's an, he's an important figure here. Um, I just wanted to give you guys that background before we get to the clip. But once again, this is Ross Coulthard. What, what can a select committee do on UAPs that it can't do currently? So yeah. what and it would uh, do... If real quick, this guy is uh, John Khalili, I think his name is, or something like that. Uh, he's just a political commentator for News Nation. So he's not really in the UFO game too much, but he knows a lot about his politics, so he's going to break this down for us. Because what they're talking about is you hear everyone talking about a UFO select committee uh, being formed, yes, no, maybe not. And like, I feel like a lot of people, and that's why when I saw this, I was like stoked to clip it and put it up on Skyfire. It's like, what exactly does that even mean? Like, before we were like all hyped and stuff, like, let's know what that means. Like, what does that mean? So here we go. And imagine if you had one now, you would have a chairperson of that committee, the top ranking Republican. You'd have a ranking member, the top Democrat on that committee. They would potentially have the power themselves to issue subpoenas to arrow to the Department of Defense, to private companies. And the House of Representatives has that power now. But what they lack is the will because of all the other reasons that I've talked about. This is not an issue uh, when you look at the laundry list of things from immigration to uh, wars to all of the other things. That is, that is really high priority. So a select committee would focus exclusively on this. It would have its own staff. It would have its own potentially lawyers, investigators, people who would work on this issue alone in a way that they don't do right now. And the subpoena power would be key because imagine a, a subpoena in the hands of somebody like a Congressman Burleson or like, a, you know, um, Congresswoman Luna or something along those lines, right? There would be a lot more interest and I think a lot more action and activity. Right now, these members that we've identified who are, you know, on the front lines of this fight, they have to go through the regular committee process to get those kinds of things done. And if they had their own jurisdiction and committee, they wouldn't have to do that. They'd be able to just move forward on things as they came up. So certainly I think that would be something that uh, would be a huge advantage to them that they would really want to get done. Uh, that they don't. Cool. So real quick to break it down for people, the yeah, things that stood out to me was this. They have some extra subpoena power, it seems like, because right now there's kind of like a caucus, right? And the caucus is just kind of like a collection of uh politicians or even non-politicians are just kind of interested in similar issues so there's like what there's like like i don't know the women's caucus you know what i mean stuff like that so there's a uap caucus which has a bunch of these uh these politicians who are interested right so we got like luna of course um timber chet but right i guess when, when something goes from a caucus to a select committee as was just explained they get extra subpoena powers they get a full-time staff with lawyers and aides and stuff like that who only work on this issue, which uh, I think we talked about it maybe in the first episode, but there's talks about Grush maybe joining this potentially or um, so it looks like it just gives them some more oomph. If you did. Well, I, I mean, the, it's not, yeah. it's, they said like the, the benefits of having a, the select committee for this would allow like the heads of Democrat and Re Republican parties to subpoena arrow which is the U.S. government's uh, basically UFO hunting squad, right? They just released a report. A lot of people found it to be very underwhelming, if not suspiciously so. Uh, one in the chat, if you really think that it, there was something else hidden in there. But the fact that they could subpoena them and get real answers, so it sounds like it gives them more teeth, more ability to grip the topic and then and then get it out of the hands of the secret keepers, right? That's what we yeah. want. Get us that select committee. I mean, for real, dude. Subpoena. What do you think about this alien girl? Well, I think currently there's a lot of legal processes that are happening that are disregarding elected officials in our government. And I think they've been stonewalling a lot of different people from whatever angle they can who've been trying to get any sort of information. So I think they're going to use whatever legal loopholes they can to try to hold back the information. And I think intelligent people like Tim Burchett and um, Representative and Luna 
Uh, I think that they know exactly that I think they know it like the whole trust me, bro thing. People love to just disregard it like, oh, well, you know, trust me, bro. But like, let's put this into like a different sort of category. Like if it was something dangerous happening to somebody, right? If somebody kept coming up to you and saying, you know, I heard this is happening or maybe, you know, this is happening. Maybe you should go check on her because I'm, you know, like something like that. Like, yeah, I'm going to take the trust me, bro, and go check on her or him or whoever. Right. Like, so after a lot of trust me, bros, of a lot of people approaching you you have to say like there's something to this so these intelligent people who are in the white house like Burchett gets and you've got um you know luna and all these different people it's just like like you were saying uh, they've been joked about as being the alien caucus right because <laughs> they love the aliens but they are getting enough trust me bros to be like we should go check on this and they're going to try to check on it and when they follow all the rules and they pass all the things and they do all the things they're supposed to and they've spent their whole lives being these amazing, amazing citizens of the United States and they've impressed the public to vote them into office and they've been legitimate, responsible adults and even more than that. And they finally get to the point where they're like, hey, cough up the information, right? And then, and then what happens to Luna? They say, well, we can't. The, the intelligence community doesn't want to release that. And she said it wasn't an agency. It wasn't the CIA. It wasn't this. They said the intelligence community does not want you to know, which is the hello from the deep government stuff that's been going on. That was the hi, we are here. And that that actually is what activated more politicians into this, rightly so. Let's take away the aliens for a second. Why are they telling Luna no when she has all the right to know? You can't tell the elected officials they don't have enough enough power in this. And They're so getting this is a huge wall. problem. Absolutely. Yes, and that, so like, Luna, I mean, the, yes. these congressmen, congresswomen, they're going and they're asking for answers. They're digging for us. They're working for us. <laughs> UFO believers, people who are curious, UFOlogists all around the world. They're saying, look, dude, we got something here and we're going to keep going after it. And they're getting stonewalled. They're getting told that they, they don't have access to the things they legally have access to, which gives it makes us all a little paranoid that there's two systems in place. I mean, what do you guys think? It seems like the the, the only way you can keep this for a secret for, for this long is with some funny business. Yeah. Oh, like, I'll say as a UFO yeah. believer, this is some great needed cope after the error report, which basically said that like UFOs are nothing. Uh, so I'm glad that there's yeah, some movement still, right? Imagine if there's just nothing, right? That could have easily been a thing. But hearing that there's this movement, and uh, let's get to this other clip about it too real quick. Let's do and it. We'll move on to the next uh, sh uh, news story. So I have heard that there's a, a push from some lawmakers to actually form a committee, right, or, or a caucus that would help answer, you know, some of those unanswered questions about UFOs and UAPs. How likely is Congress to form such a committee, especially during an election year where there are a lot of big ticket items on the table to focus on? Well, Marky, just to give us all a history lesson, the last time Congress had a really aggressive committee that did oversight of the intelligence community and the Defense Department was back in the 80s during the Iran-Contra affair and the Warren Commission. And there's a push on for a similar kind of UAP select committee, looking at what it is that the Pentagon and the intelligence community really know about this subject. What are they hiding? Now, we all know they are hiding something. In fact, there's a new poll out, I think, last week, which shows that well over 60-something percent of Americans believe that the US government knows a lot more than it's letting on about UAPs. But the big question is whether a UAP select committee will be allowed to be opened within the coverage of the Oversight Committee, which is the main House Oversight and Accountability Committee. Mm. And the big hope is that that committee will be given the powers it needs, the security clearances it needs to start putting the blowtorch on the Pentagon and the intelligence community to get these questions answered. Yeah, and if a select committee is formed uh, to, to see what their first order of business would be. Uh, as I mentioned off the top, Ross, this is your second episode uh, of the show. I'm just curious what the response has been to it so far. Massive. I mean, I'm very flattered and gratified. We, I think we're well over 600 and something thousand views already on the show. Okay. And uh, there's a lot. That's what I'm talking about, uh, Ross's podcast. Everyone should go follow it. Friend of the show, Ross Coltart. What's the name um, of the podcast? 
It's on News Nation. It's on News Nation. Mm-hmm. It's something cool. It's cool. Yeah, it's cool. It's good. I've listened to a little bit of it. It's good. He was, he I was like doing what he need does. to know with Bryce Zabel. Am I tripping? Uh, yeah, and I think so that's hard. still a thing. I think that's still oh, wow. a thing. Bryce Zabel, <laughs> yeah, he's like a bit of a content creator. I always forget what the heck. Yeah, he's a uh, he's worked, I, so I met Bryce over the summer last summer in Roswell, and he was a filmmaker. So he's worked in in the news for a very very long time, and he also worked on some TV shows back in the day in LA that were extraterrestrial related. Right. I can't remember. Yes, yeah, so he has like a lot of you know experience, like very top. Uh, I think he's got a couple. Was it something it skies Emmys or something? He's got awards Dark too. Skies, something like that. Yeah, really interesting person. Um, Dark real quick skies. in the chat, you have yes, says skies, a member of right. what oh. in response to drama alert saying any other members. So yeah, there's memberships on this channel. Guys, um, we're going to be putting out members only content soon, right? So if you guys want to become a member, get some extra <laughs> stuff from these live streams and then get like a little bit of the after show. We're going to be uploading some of these like first content. We create content for the channel. So you'll get like first view on that. Become a member at the very least. Hit that <laughs> like button. Hit that notification button, man. Uh, we're trying to just maximize this channel for you guys. It'd be like the hub of all this UFO stuff. So thanks again for being here. Yeah. And Pepper said, great friend of the show, memer of the show. Can we dedicate today's show to Shane's rabbit? Great video, Panda. Almost cried. And that's referring to video I put out on Twitter. Had copyrighted music. Uh, landslide. Fleetwood Mac. Can't right go the, wrong. Right and to I think heart. we totally dedicate today's show to Absolutely. Steve the Rabbit. I think the day is dedicated to Steve the Rabbit. Mm-hmm. If you're in the UFO community, if you love Shane as much as we do, uh, you love that rabbit by proxy, right? And so it's his day. This is Steve's day. Somebody said Bryce Abel always looks surprised. What I do love about Bryce Abel, the meme yeah. real quick, and then we'll move on to the news, is uh, in his background, people troll him. I think Nora does too. Like He's always trying to have like as much stuff in the background. like You know what I mean? Because he, he is an accomplished uh, Hollywood person, right? So he has like the volleyball I from he has an Oscar Cast too. Away. He has like an Oscar, but like... He has Wilson? Like, yeah. Yes, he, has he has Wilson, Wilson from Cast Away? Volleyball. Yeah, he is Wilson the volleyball. He has that, yes. <laughs> That's how cool kid. he is. He's it's cool. like a guitar pick from Led Zeppelin, dude. Like, I know. Hit, hit me with that. I think, like, yeah, I think he got it from working on it, working on the show, or Good working on the movie. That's really cool, Wilson, dude. All right, so that's Bryce Zabel. Um, and so there's, yeah, go follow the uh, Ross Coltart's new podcast. I guess he's already crushing near a million views. Good for him. Good for him. Yeah, real quick, just so you guys know what I'm talking about, uh, and then we'll move on to the next story. And it's, I, this is all with love, but uh. It's like, and I think it's like when they started the podcast, like there wasn't as much. And it's like every time there's like more and more stuff. Got the orb there, yeah. the Wilson, the the Oscar, Grammy, the, whatever that is. It's the bet yeah. sphere. Something. He won bet. something. I told you he won something. There it is. He's got, <laughs> That's he's it. Got the bet sphere from <laughs> Jay right. Allen Heinrich. Cool. <laughs> All right, Tupa. What's next for the news? Next for the news, we got uh, dude. I think I think we got to get to that uh, oil rig photograph. It, it's it's super compelling, dude. We got to get to it. Like. That's a that's a bizarre thing. Oh, we also have a UFO clip. You know what I mean? No, and while we're looking UFO for this, clip. while we're looking, not from the it's from, it's a different it's a different clip. Right there. Watch for here, the check, arrow here. Check this out. This was captured in true slow motion using a high speed camera, and it actually happened in less than a second. When shooting high speed at 1,000 frames per second, a two-second video becomes around 40 seconds. It's like capturing a speeding bullet, and it's not the only one I got that day. I'll show you more soon. Hello, I'm Joshua P. Warren, and I've been saying for a long time that I believe the key to a breakthrough in UAP research is using high-speed photography. What do you guys think about that? High-speed photography to capture some of these things uh yeah i think it's possible i i for one think the technology of being able to fake something is is so easy now it's ridiculous um yeah i mean if they could catch a ufo on it potentially i see a lot of people you know in the past and even currently talk about investing lots of money in photos and all sorts of different things to catch ufos right yeah yeah. it's just it's 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 um because UAPX was doing that, right? UAPX is still doing that. Yeah, there They're have been several organizations trying to create technology that would be able to see this stuff a little better. And the, the idea that it moves a little faster than we can tell uh, or a little faster than we can notice or pick up is kind of, it's been in the mix for a hot minute. I think even Gary Nolan has spoken about this. 
Gary Nolan, of course, the scientist from Stanford University. Who's Friend of the show. Brains, studying the brains of experiencers. Um, been on Lex Fridman, all kinds of stuff. Study him if you guys don't know about him. But yeah, they're talking about this. Big so, supporter of Skyfire News. Huge. I don't think we have a bigger supporter in the mix. I really... I Right? I mean, damn, dude. Damn! Get right back over to this clip. There's one more part of it I think we should see. What do you guys this think about This looks a lot this? like mine. This looks like my UFO experience that I had. Really? <clears throat> yes. So I did the CE5 Greer's meditation, like, I don't know, many, 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 many years ago. And this is some, like just the dot. It was just a dot. It looks just like that. The photo literally looks just like that. Anyway. Well, let's take a look. So further. Let's see if it let's see if it rings any more bells <laughs> for you, alien girl. Check this out. Less than two <laughs> seconds and the camera doesn't move. Now, as this shiny ball flies to the right, another object shoots out of it on the top left right there. Watch for the arrow here and you'll see. Boom. Right there it goes. All right. Now, while all this was happening in the top right hand corner of the screen, well, guess what? Toward the end of the uh, end of the uh, video on the bottom left hand side of the screen, an entirely different object goes zooming by at an incredible speed. I didn't even notice it at first because I was so fixated on the shiny ball. So this is what happens on the bottom left hand side of the screen. You see that? Here's a closer view of that. So what is that? And look at how that original object takes that incredible 90 degree turn. How can we explain that according to the laws of physics? What physical forces are working against doing that kind of a, a change? What physical forces are involved in making an object turn a steering wheel? I don't know, but it turns pretty sharply and it's doing some weird stuff. Right. So just aim a camera at the sky every once in a while. Hit record. If you have a high speed, try that. See what you get. A lot of people are pulling information like different objects, things that they normally wouldn't see. They're up there. We don't really look up that often. So if you do grab a camera, we got people in the chat talking about CE5. Of course, that stands for close encounters of the fifth kind. It's the only category of the close encounter scale that involves human initiated contact, meaning you sit down and meditate with some friends in the desert, and then you hope a little light shows up in the sky and maybe you have an experience, maybe you don't. Stephen Greer coined the phrase. Stephen Greer pi uh, pioneered the protocols, I think is what you'd call it. And so uh, if you want to yeah. go on a camping trip, with the Greer man. We'll always, just always say, because we're trying to educate new people, right, too. Uh, he didn't really invent it. He just kind of codified it and, like, put it Well, he all... created, like, the protocol, right? The, the CE5 but refers he was to a specific... on a lot of historical, like, old Tibetan yes. kind yes. of things. And yes. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. He kind of condensed it and gave it a title. Um and it's and it's yeah. stuck. People be doing it. Demi Lovato went out there and did it with Stephen Greer. Yep. Demi Lovato, dude. How many other people out there that are kind of like we should interested? Get her on the show. There's no one I want on the show more than Demi Lovato. Okay. There's I think no you guys one. could get Demi Lovato. I think we really? Could too, right? I like that, I like that confidence, yeah. alien girl. I like that. Yeah. Nah, that's what I needed. Oh, you know, I mean, maybe we could get Fred Durst. I could. Maybe we could do that. <laughs> That'd be yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah, get me Fred. Get Fred Durst on here, dude. Like I've been trying her, yes, to because he's interested. Respond. He aged very well too for a rock star. I know. I had like a seven foot poster of him when I was Killer. in sixth grade. I thought that would win him over to become beyond the Alien Girl show. Right. But chat, I share your favorite Limp Biscuit song him. in the in the chat. I want to know. <laughs> well, it's the bad word. <laughs> I say it right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so on to the news. Next news story as we go through the news here. These pictures broke today in the Daily Mail, right? Yeah. And uh, it was oil rigger spots UFOs hovering for 10 minutes above the deck before zooming off in an instant. So I'm going to go ahead and read some of the quotes from the article. Uh, Daily Mail spoke with oil rigger Pat, who obtained the pictures and information of the sighting from a fellow colleague on another rig who was stationed in Tampico months before he arrived. So we're already like a, two layers of trust me, bro, there. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, my contact said the UAP showed up as they were putting the oil rig legs to the seabed, said Pat. The rig known as a jackup is a barge fitted with three long sport legs that can be raised or lowered. One of the images shows a, sh a saucer-shaped craft hanging in the night sky and towering above the oil rig. A close look at the object shows at least 10 round lights circulating the bottom. 
Uh, the oil rigger said the other UFO is triangular. The only clue about its design is how three lights at its base are positioned. I think, uh, let me see. When Pat arrived in Tampico, he discovered the locals' belief about an underwater alien base called Amupak, claiming the otherworldly beings are their protectors. My rig only came here recently, he said. It was after I discovered the local belief being so strong as regarded its aliens protecting them that I discussed with the guy who works as a liaison between our two rigs. Then he told me about the encounters, and he sent me these messages. Very interesting. Um, so yeah, chat, what do you guys think? Are, do you, does this kind of stuff excite you at all? Or are you just bitter? I mean, it's cool to hear the backstory and what. Do you think they're fake? I see friend of the show, Pepper Gozen, is a... Uh, I like my orbs and triplets, and look at this one has a little bit of a triplet orb thing going on. What do you guys? It's think? almost perfect, dude. Like the shape of it, like the angle. It's like a perfect little triangle, like in the in the right angle of the photo of the the person capturing it. It's very strangely yeah. perfect. It's a TR three B. There's no doubt about it. That's what Alien I Girl. Think. Tell us what the TR three B is. Break that <laughs> down for us, because this, this is <laughs> very. It's a very interesting. It's like, it's a classification of a UFO. Okay. So to start it out with, whenever I see any triangular craft, I get very excited. And that's the first thing that I say. <laughs> it's TR3B. Um, in my own belief, I think that there are definitely patents out there that I think exist if they have not been found. I heard maybe, I don't know, Salador Pais. I don't know. I don't really know all of that. But I do think even if they're not out there, I think that they're, they do have these patents for the TR3B. Um, there was a TR three B, a TR three B, like a TR two B. There was a TR two B because if you listen to Jim Goodall's work and the research that he's done, there was like a, a sort of TR three B before already that like kind of exists. And so the next TR three B, in my own opinion, is going to be um, it's something we already have. I believe it to be a triangular craft that um, does not. Um, it's, it has anti-gravity. I think there's an anti-gravity craft that's triangular TR-3B that we are currently in possession of the U.S. government. Um, I think we actively use um, this craft in secret operations. And the reason I think that is because I think the Space Force logo alone is foreshadowing the idea that these triangular crafts are going to be the future of what comes in as we enter into the space era. That's why really? I think they put a TR-3B on on the space force logo that's very so we got a tr3b showing up on the face <laughs> the space force logo they do that? hold up i don't even remember yes Bring this is what's up, happening dude. next my love my lovely friends i love this you. is why we hang out guys this is we're breaking <laughs> no one else would here, understand okay? this the tr3b the triangular ufo crowd you asked okay no, I, I want this yeah the space yeah, force that's what's logo. happening they're gonna be flying around everywhere guys we're gonna be used to it mm -hmm. uh Alien girl, do you do you remember? Did you ever catch that video of Lou Elizondo talking about how uh, the orbs, the cylinders, and the 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 TR threes, the triangles, are sometimes uh, representative of like energy fields between multiple orbs? Or like I mean, a, maybe. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely theory. possible. Well, I think it's it's there's so much of the science behind it that we might not even understand, and and so much of quantum physics and quantum mechanics and quantum entanglement and all these quantum words that get thrown into the mix. You know, if you if you don't have any sort of real deep understanding of physics, which I do not, or some deep understanding of of quantum or any of this, these words get thrown about like it's teleportation or like magic, right? True. Like I can make I. Can turn you all into into like you know dragons with quantum physics like i can say whatever i want if you don't understand quantum physics and i don't so i don't really talk about quantum plasma stuff as much because it's not my strength but what i do think i am strong in is the history the documentation looking at records looking at trends looking at things like this that happen and things like this are foreshadowed right like that is a triangular tier 3b craft there is an image of the globe behind it and we even have an orbit, which is probably, in my own opinion, symbolic of, you know, Earth and Space Force being able to be in orbit and have our craft in orbit. <clears throat> but why the triangular craft? I mean, it's a given. We just haven't. Th th maybe this is what they're preparing. I don't know how long they're going to be able to hide the fact that they 
you know, are going to be using craft like this to take um, military people up into space. If there's one thing we know about young military people is they can't keep their mouth shut. Like, we'll figure it out eventually. You know, all you get, you get a bunch of military people under 30, you get them drinking, get them talking about being on a TR-3B going up to space. The next three yeah. generations are going to know all about the TR-3Bs because young, they, some of them will keep their mouth shut. I'm not saying all of them, but there are some people that you can get the information out of. So it's just a matter of time. So they might as well slap a TR-3B on the Space Force logo because they're going to have to tell people about it soon anyway, that they've had this triangular cloth that they can like fly around. So that's a good point. That's a really a good point. Going and, it's, on. and it's right there. Sometimes the best hidden things are right in your face, right? Right in your face. And a lot of people came up to the conclusion that the Delta shape thing reminded them of the Star Trek logo. Right. But I think you might be onto something that triangle, that shape might be revealing something about what the government has planned or these private defense contractors have planned for a rollout of a potential craft or advanced technology. There's no reason not to suspect that, I think. Well, I saw a triangular craft, too. And, you know, the Phoenix Lights, obviously, was a triangular craft. So for me, the triangular crafts are way more um familiar to me than flying saucers even so our buddy just, screen saw triangle craft yeah you know who else you know who do you know that the pilot who saw and reported the very first report of the phoenix lights was kurt russell i do know because uh because you covered it, but yeah, no, yeah, I do know because you guys we're, covered we're it. We're all too. UFO nerds, so I knew that, but I knew that too. Yeah, <laughs> did you know that? We got a very short clip. I, I don't think I was. I did, <laughs> but like it's so interesting. And when I first saw it, dude, I did not know that that's what was happening. I had no idea that he was in the mix about it at all. I had no idea he was a pilot. I didn't know he could fly. Uh, it was wild. Um, real quick, let's see. Nice. Okay, cool. In the mix. There's a story that, uh, another story involving you and your son that I want to ask you about because I don't know the details on the story, but you guys saw a UFO. True? Oh, you're talking about, yeah. Um, yeah, it is In true. a plane, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Goldie, Goldie had an experience. I, I, she wrote about it in her book. It's, it, it, but anyway, so she's, she's not just a firm believer. She had an experience. So... One time, Oliver, I was flying. I was, it was in a, in a time where I was <laughs> kind of like I, I just a couple of years earlier learned to fly. So I was still at a period in my life where any excuse to fly would do. He wanted to go to Phoenix to see a friend. And I said, sure, I'll fly. There. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we flew to we were My dad Phoenix. wouldn't drive yeah, me to right. the wall, yeah. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so, bowling. That was it. <laughs> so we're going into Phoenix and uh, we're, I think it was Sky Harbor and, uh, there's these bank of lights, six lights, uh, in the shape of a triangle going back right over the airport. And I'm looking at them as I'm coming in. I'm, you know, on the, on the horn talking to them, and I'm coming in. And I, I'm not saying anything about it because I'm kind of confused by it, but it, I can't tell if this is going to be an issue or not with landing. And Oliver said, uh, hey, Pac, what are those lights? And, it was, and I said, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what they are. And so anyway, I called up the tower and I said, what are you guys painting tonight over the, over the airport? And they said, we're not showing anything. What, what are you seeing? I said, well, there's six lights in a row. And they said, do you want to report this? And I said, I, look, it, I, I can't identify it. It's flying and it's six objects. <laughs> so that's what it is, right? So we landed. I dropped him off, flew home. Years later, I come, I come home and Goldie's watching this show on UFOs. And the most reported one of all time was this one in Phoenix. And I'm watching, I start to see this show and I said, wait a minute. That's the night Ollie and I were landing in Phoenix. I remember that. And I had, I, I said, wait a minute, I've got it in my, in my logbook. So I went to my logbook and I, I didn't mention anything about the, the reporting the UFO, but my, but my light, my flight was logged. So I said, yeah, and, and on the show, they talked about 20,000 people reporting it and only one um, general aviation pilot. And I said, that's, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> and, right? so, so the weirdest part of that to me, though, was I'd never thought about it from the time I landed until <gasps> I saw that TV show. And when I saw Oliver the next day, he hadn't either. Really? And I thought that was kind of... 
It's beautiful. Very interesting. Beautiful. It's crazy. Like, <clears throat> how often do we hear that story where someone experiences, they have a sighting, or something happens, and then they they forget about it almost immediately. There's another, I won't play the clip, but there's another moment um, of George Clinton, I think, from the Parliament Funk Funkadelic. Like, he has the same story where he was with Bootsy Collins, and they were driving around, I think it was Detroit or something, and uh, they see... They have an experience, right? Something shoots down. They look up. They miss. They're missing time, and they didn't think about it for a second after it happened until 10, 15 years later. How strange! How Very strange! strange. Uh, I got this next up for the news. In the news, we posted this yesterday and actually kind of sent, but um, we didn't get to it. So let's just watch this. And then I think we have one more thing after this, and we're pretty much done. Sounds but, good. Um, let me just read what we put to uh, Nared Commander. NORAD Commander General Sharon. Gregory M. Goliath testifying to the Senate Armed Services Committee about the Langley Air Force Base encounters. So let's watch this. Senator Kane, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thanks to our witnesses for your great service. General Gio, I want to begin with you. My colleagues and I on this committee have recently discussed installation security from with respect to drone threats at bases in the United States recognizing that we're in an unclassified setting what can you tell me about how northcom is addressing this issue and with with what partners are you working this challenge senator uh, northcom uh, as part of my 90 day uh, assessment it, uh, to tell the truth the uh, counter uas uh, mission has dominated that so far in the first month uh, uh, of course i knew it was an issue coming from a, another combatant command where uh, we, we faced that threat in a very different way because of the environment, uh, but I wasn't uh, prepared for the number of occur incursions that I see. Uh, I've gone into the uh, um, events at uh, Joint Base Langley Eustis, and I'm using that as a uh, the, the centerpiece of my 90-day assessment to see where NORAD and NORTHCOM can and should do more as this uh, merging uh, capability outstrips the operational framework that we have to address it. And can you talk about other partners that you're working yes. with? Because obviously there's sort of a law enforcement component of this. Um, so who, who else is, is working with you on this problem? Sir? Yes, sir, absolutely. So primarily Department of Homeland Security and Department of Justice uh, along the border have the primary responsibility. That's who I'm working with there. Uh, in the interior, it's the services that have the uh, responsibility for defending their bases. Uh, so working with each individual service and then also, again, Department of Homeland Security and Department of Energy uh, for specific uh, critical infrastructure locations. Those are the primary ones that I'm working with. Th thank you for that. Now a question for both of you. OK. <coughs> Some interesting things he said, Department of Energy, right? Mm, whoa. And then he also said. Uh... Why is that interesting, Red? Why oh, is yeah. the DOE like so <laughs> involved in this stuff? A lot of people in the yes. UFO community suspect that the Department of Energy has their hands all over this UFO thing. Yes. And um, it even ties into David Grush, who we were talking about earlier, the quote-unquote UFO whistleblower. Um, the Department of Energy is in many ways an extension of like the Manhattan Project, you could say, or at least they're the civilians what? with oversight of it, of our nuclear stuff. If you look at my last video on my channel, I cover this in depth about how the Department of Energy was made out of the, um, shoot, now I'm blanking on it. Mm. But yeah, Edward Condon, Robert Oppenheimer, a um, bunch of these dudes were basically lobbying in the 50s to get civilian control of nuclear weapons after uh, their scientific work had been used for that destruction of Hiroshima. And basically since then, and as Gresh has kind of uh, said, <laughs> conjecture in the chat, I see that for sure. But um they basically yeah, yeah. put the atomic, uh, they put the Manhattan Project secrecy over UFO stuff. You mean like they took the secrecy that they developed, the techniques they developed, the, the stonewalling, the the barriers between public knowledge and this, which was used to win a war. They took that and they applied those same methods to scientific research outside of weapons, uh, possibly related to maybe even UFOs. I mean, there's a strong connection between nuclear and ufo sightings right there's a strong connection there so it's just interesting when i hear the doe or department of energy it sounds so unassuming like oh yeah cool department of energy but then you peel back a layer right red
peels back a layer for us and now we find out oh shit like it's a little bit more involved with that right so if you guys are out there look out for doe if, if you see if you're looking if you're researching ufos and you come across it don't it's not a snooze fest dive into it because it's a big deal for some reason yeah all right well i feel like that's kind of it for the day right we're trying to keep these kind of short and and moving yes um, that's a great place great place to end it alien girl thank you so yeah. much thank you so Wait. much for coming through this Wait, was a i just wanted to add something Please do. Cool? just yeah. a yeah. final thought absolutely okay. absolutely okay so as we were talking about the Manhattan Project and we were talking about all these things, okay? So with you were talking about the nukes and UFOs, once people really do a deep dive in this, it becomes impossible to not notice that UFOs and nuclear have a connection. There was uh, something that happened, that all of us know, but what I love about what you're doing about the show is you're doing baseline information, which Bryce Zabel told me I needed to do, do baseline, be sure to explain it, right? So you have Maelstrom Air Force Base, Right, because I try to do that more on my show baseline. Anyway, Maelstrom Air Force Base, which was it's it's an Air Force Base in Montana, and nuclear um, warheads were actually deactivated by UFOs. This event at Maelstrom Air Force Base has made it into the um, political discussion. In I think Matt Gates brought it up, and he said in a UAP meeting or hearing or something that the Maelstrom Air Force Base incident where they deactivated nuclear warheads with UFOs was in the ether. Now, everybody said that the AARO report came out, right? And I want to just let everybody know that Maelstrom Air Force Base was never definitively solved in the AARO oh, report. That's a great point. They, they did definitively speak about Vandenberg, right? So that's Vandenberg. interesting. Those are always like the two UFO nuke cases. Bob Jacobs, uh, Robert Salas, both. Uh, and Vandenberg is where, people, is so where a people. missile was launched, right? And it had a dummy nuclear warhead on it. And the witnesses and the, the footage, apparently, from people who've seen the footage, they say, they describe a UFO flying up to the missile while it's mid-flight, circling around it, shooting lasers at it, and then it just falls out of the sky. That's the Vandenberg case. And um, Tim, I think... Hold on. Chris Bledsoe explains that very well in Danny Jones' podcast with him. Go check that out if you guys want to. But go on. Go on, uh, Alien Girl. I love, I love this. Oh, no. That was it. That was my final thought. Thank you. That's for interesting. I didn't notice that. Good, but also, there, there's a few things that are left out of there that's like, that's some good cope, right? Hey, they didn't definitively say no to Nimitz <laughs> in the paper. They didn't say no to yeah. this. Uh, we got a little hope. Left. We got a little hope. all we have left. A little hope, a little cope. <laughs> oh, we'd actually... Anymore. Real quick, the last thing. Did we want to cover that Green Street Greenwald thing today? I feel like we should. That's like today. Listen, guys, we have Wait, to. We have to go over time. We have to go oh, over the time. Wait, what? Okay. Wait, what's New going York, on? Okay, I'll explain this to you, Alien Girl. New York Post <laughs> journalist Stephen Greenstreet is in an eternal war with believers of ufology. We don't know why yes. we have our we yes. can speculate. He's been down bad before. He's been down bad before, but he is not a chump, dude. He 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 keeps coming back for more, no matter how much because basically the stuff he's posting now is like exposes on the disclosure process. And so, like the stuff he's uncovered is a little juicy, if not very juicy, and has a potential if it's true or pans out to kind of collapse at least a section of this UAP UFO activism that we're seeing uh, in, in, in reference to disclosure, because some of it's a little off the books. It seems a little weird. So he's out there doing it. And uh, in his ten tenacious kind of way, he ruffles a lot of feathers and he has people come at him all the time. He's usually, I think, kind of on the side of a man named John Greenwald. Greenwald is famous for one thing, Two, two things, one being a genuine nice guy. Number two, since 1999, I believe he has collected on his website, theblackvolt.com, he has collected the largest amount of FOIA papers. We're talking about Freedom of Information Act requests that he has made personally, if not collected himself, uh, about the UFO topic. So if you want to know anything about the UFO topic as far as government disclosure, you want to go to the Black Vault. If you want to know if something's been confirmed or someone's talking about something, you want to go to the theblackvault.com. You want to follow John Greenwald. And Again, he's more matter of fact because he is a, a person who's getting these documents. He's referencing the documents when he talks about what he thinks, what he believes. Um, and him and Green Street had a spat today on Twitter, which we're all familiar with UFO Twitter. Spats are not a rare occurrence, right? So, but this one got a little juicy. Uh, while Red pulls that up, we're going to like see. Yeah, kind and of all that is too. Um, 
this is i think alien girl touched on this a little bit earlier too uh i kind of i feel like we all i feel like all three of us probably really resonate with uh john greenwald because we love ufos we think something's going on we are kind of critical of some of the weird dynamics at play in this yeah. disclosure movement but we're still like believer but there is this kind of thing where like when people like are like i don't like the way xyz person is controlling their fan base or their mob um they tend to like like you said like uh for a few years there's it's and it's not like they're enemies or anything but like john greenwald and stephen green street are kind of like in the same lane about a lot of things you know what i mean they're both like a tip was in a real program you know what i mean uh but um this error report and i think you said alien girl and I felt it a lot too. I feel like a, a lot of the people like in this camp, like me, you, Greenwald, if you will, we like reinvigorated us to like be like, we're still UFO. You know what I mean? I, he put out a tweet the other day that was like, uh, basically saying that like the air report really just invigorated me. I'm excited to make content about this, all the flaws. I've been like working painstakingly on like an arrow two part video about this stuff. Um, just kind of yeah the snowflakes less, are out man those yeah, snowflakes falling in love with the yeah. subject again yeah. right in a weird way okay. that get it, having it be crapped on publicly by your government is like okay let's get back to business like you know what i mean uh it's the sheeple man it's the snowflakes that have fallen down they're like i guess you're right i don't believe and all the hardcore people who took this up and they've taken it up <laughs> for a long time are just like oh <laughs> no, yeah. youngins no, no, no. hold on tight you, like, right. it's happening it's so happening that's right that's now. a little back story for this uh for this little twitter exchange we can just talk about it so it started with this guy uh ronak p who is a part of the uap caucus which is nick gold and lester um I forget his last name nary i believe or nair they have this like political i respect it they have a nice website that kind of does like what the bigfoot home did where it's like automatic prompts and stuff to write your legislature and whatnot uh so this lester i mean this ronat guy posted had a great time recently teaching high school at u.s history or teaching high school u.s history students about the uap subject right and this is cool and i personally love seeing stuff like this right and uh as we as we kind of said, Green Street's kind of a little bit bitter towards the disclosure movement, and I feel like he's justifiably in some ways, but I feel like he goes too hard. Uh, his response was: UFO activists have apparently infiltrated the American public school system and are teaching pseudoscience and pseudo history to children. Right? So totally. Hey, whoa, freaking... whoa, 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 whoa! Can you repeat that? He is so. Is he okay lately? Oh wait, hold up! I'm so sorry. <laughs> Uh, is that why you did the thing? I need to share my just my screen and not screen street. Show. Okay, I think that whole Mormon childhood really roughed him in up, the best man. way. I mean, <laughs> you look at UFO <laughs> intros in the chat, like it, it does something to people. Okay, so this was the first thing, right? And then this was Green Street's reply UFO activists have apparently infiltrated the American public school system and are teaching pseudoscience and pseudo history to children. Right. So, what, what do y'all think of that? I think that's bullshit. Oh, geez. sorry, <laughs> I messed <Really>? up. I'm <laughs> sorry. I was doing so good. I even didn't say the limp biscuit. <laughs> Keemstar is gonna be mad at me. <laughs> Keemstar is gonna cancel me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're good. No, we're good. good. Episode uh, five. We're keeping it real, dude. So that's a good question. Uh, UFO <laughs> activists have apparently infiltrated the American public school system. Uh, there's reason. I think that there's reason to check that. I don't. Yeah, I don't... and this whole pseudoscience, pseudo history. I mean, even if you want to go debunker as they come. Like the Robertson panel was a real document. There was a real like, whether you think it was a le like a legitimate concern that like people are there was active measures by the government to control this subject. You know what I mean? There is active things happening right now, and having a uh, high school students learn about it. I don't think like this is the expected Green Street response to this for sure, right? You I don't I, disagree with them. You don't Can disagree. I, I you don't, don't think we should be covering UFO history in schools? To be honest, no. Oh, wow. Okay. To be, to be honest. Okay. No, I think that the subject is so multifaceted. He says it's on so, Skyfire News, a, a whole news organization dedicated to, to, to speaking about this subject. 
I don't think that we should have people going into schools unless we vet what they're saying. We cannot have people because this is a nebulous, okay, vague right. there, topic. Okay. Right? I'm fake. So, I, so these I guys like go Ronak. in there. Ronak's cool, but there's some. <laughs> do you want? Do you want King Milk Fart in a in a high school teaching people about? Lou? Yeah, I, I Dude, get the. What's the lesson today, teacher? King Milk Fart's not that bad. <laughs> we need we need supervision on this we need oversight on this while it's fun and it's exciting if you i've i've personally seen on different symposiums on different presentations on different spaces and different reports people have wild ideas about this topic that go into where humans came from and what's religion and the get that out aliens are hot Get that out of school. Let so the kids I, go home and, and turn on ancient aliens, bro. I don't I don't need my students out there. Like I'm really that. proud of being in our community for a lot of different reasons. I think a lot of it because we are a lot of deep researchers and we really do get obsessed with details. I really do like to fight about certain words and certain documents and what could it mean. <clears throat> if anything, I think the study of UFOs is one of the most educational things that a person can do. And I think for people who get into the subject who are actually critically minded and can actually like recently i just you know i just realized you know i guess maybe hitler didn't spend the rest of his life in argentina because somebody sent me an article about his dental records and how like it was legitimate these were his teeth that they found in the bunker right but i like to go down those rabbit holes but i know they make me smarter in the end <clears throat> because it makes me more trustworthy to know like okay she okay. knew she was wrong right yeah like it's, it's it's a search of critical thinking and like it's actually something we need to be teaching kids and students in 2024 in a world of disinformation critical thinking is going to be gone it's going no. to be gone like no it, it's got to get better it's it I don't think it's going to get it's, brain. it's not going to yeah. get better. The uh, the, brain. the mechanisms in place to destroy critical thinking are well established in our society right now. Uh, we need obviously, right? We need to encourage that amongst each other and with our children, right? But in terms of what the system is providing us, it, it absolutely is in my opinion, correct me in chat if you guys want to, in my opinion, the there are multiple multiple mechanisms in place to discourage critical thinking and to encourage just absorbing information in, in a way that's kind of like mostly hypnotic. I mean, I want to know what you guys think about that. I know we got a lot of watchers over there on Twitter right now. First of all, I want everyone on Twitter to come on over to YouTube. This is where we're at, all right? Become a member. We have extra content coming out. At least hit that notification bell because we're doing this every chat. Day. Put one in chat if you like what Ronak is doing here. If you like the the taking it upon yourself to do it and put a two if you are like Tupa and Green Street and you're kind of uh, turned off by this, kind of sketched out. And reason being, Tupa, would you at least agree that would you like an official government board looking at it and like introduce it into the curriculum officially? You know no, I mean? because we don't know what curriculum it falls under. Is it social studies? Is it psychology? Is it biology? Is it technology? We don't have those. We just don't even cover yet. it at all. We just... We're going to go through this disclosure process History. and like just not even talk about it in schools with kids. Time out. History. Alien girl just corrected History. me. I stand History. corrected. It okay, is, can I give an example? It, May I give it, an example? It yes. is historical. It is historical. And I, being somebody from New Mexico, knows about the great history of my state of New Mexico. And in the state of New Mexico, there was a city named Roswell. <laughs> And this is actually a, a class that you could teach kids in school for a day. Roswell has a fact that they have a UFO parade that happens. Like fact-based things, right? Like you cannot, it's it's a fact that every year, twice the population of Roswell enters into the city to celebrate the possibility that there may have been a crash flying saucer. That is a fact. Like, so Roswell, yes, Roswell unveils the new that's what I'm saying. I like this one. T cause in the chat. This, this is lecture by Green Street. Textbook. Lecture by Green Street, then lecture by Ronak, then close it out with a lecture by KMF. <laughs> That's Dude, the best guys, way to do it. Guys, I'm a virtual conference coordinator now. If you ever want to sit down, yeah, I could do all sorts of wild stuff. Absolutely. But um, yeah, well, this could be the cover of the textbook, Tupa. This is they, yeah. th this is real. I didn't make this. So Roswell really <laughs> did just... unveil their own their new police like badge. In the, yeah, the they love the aliens. That's yeah. the whole Roswell logo right there. That's their yeah. year round logo, you know. And so um, this is already really deep into 
And it's interesting to people because it, it kind of is a critical thinking exercise. If Roswell's totally wrong, how exciting would it be to get to a point where you could actually like where I could actually believe myself with the critical thinking that I, I believed I to have and to think like, oh, Roswell's not real. Like even that would be exciting to me. Mm. But I've, I haven't gotten there yet. When I get there, that'll be great. But that critical thinking, like, yeah, we should be teaching kids that not everything put in front of you is real. That's half the problem right now. It's half it really the problem. Is. But Alien Girl, you really did correct me, dude. Like you, like all these things, like it's is it biology? We while that's unknown. What? I'm sorry, I don't mean to be so contrary. No, you did great. Like I, I wasn't thinking about the historical aspect. We can I was just already thinking teach. like <laughs> too, but you make historical UFO videos too, bro. You, I think you just have a little bit of a brain fart too. Bro. Well, that's what no, Michael I Tratt just, always I says, just right? don't think that's the capacity in which that class was taught. I don't think that's the spirit in which that lesson. That but I, I do was get there you because this is some like demon stuff, or you know, what I mean, it could really become like state-sponsored religion, like overnight, and that is something to be careful of. Yes, that's a that's that's the point. That's the point. Is like, yeah, there needs yeah. to be a clear definition of what it is before we allow independent. Um, I don't know, lobbyists and promoters to go out to, to our students and be like, yeah, you what about this? What about this? What about this? I personally think people get abducted and low key, like assaulted might be the best way of putting it on for YouTube. <laughs> do we teach that to high schoolers? You know what I mean? Or oh, do we no, just, no. Do we just ignore not. that part? Do we no, just no, all no. ignore that no. part of this? That's you need much point. more evidence before you could introduce it. Like all I'm thinking about when it comes to Roswell is the basic information, right? The stuff that was in the newspaper, it was taken out of the newspaper, right? Like a lot of the stuff that's going on in New, New Mexico could really be um, broken down to just be things going on with government testing with all the Air Force bases. And we have Sandia labs and we have Los Alamos labs. And, you know, just in New Mexico, in Albuquerque alone, there are hollowed out mountains that they used to store nuclear bombs in. It's just kind of like in the culture so it wouldn't be too out of the realm that like it was just all related to that stuff but we know that's not true yeah and let's close out here here's <laughs> so remember we're doing the back and forth ronak green street john greenwald so john greenwald quotes green street uh who remember green street says ufo activists have apparently infiltrated the american public school system and are teaching pseudoscience and pseudo history to children uh john greenwald quotes and says I've lectured to schools about the history of UFOs, to elementary classes, high schools, and colleges, universities. I intertwine how the legal rights through FOIA has produced much, or has produced more of that history behind the topic, and those findings continue to show why it's an important one to discuss, not dismiss blindly. Most recently, I lectured for a class at the University of Richmond School of Law just about a week or two ago. Not sure about this lecture class, but I can say there is an important, interesting, and verifiably factual history to the topic of UFOs, if presented correctly. So if it is done right, a class taught and having a presentation about all this is incredibly valuable and worthwhile, on top of it being interesting. To dismiss that and label it all pseudoscience and pseudo-history is disingenuous at best. It also shows how little of an understanding there really is to that history. You shouldn't base it all on post 2017. I love that line. That's how I feel about a lot of this stuff too. And that's uh, that Lou Reviews. Oh, I love it. I Lou love Reviews it. needs this to resonate with this one. Uh, yeah. I'm proud to speak to students about that history and will continue to do so. It isn't pushing an alien narrative, nor does it push pseudoscience or pseudo history. It pushes the importance of actual research and the value of evidence backed viewpoints. And before we get into the discussion, there's a little, little bit of a boom, boom, boom. Green Street says, you're grandstanding and pearl clutching, notwithstanding all one word. This specific case involves someone teaching a high school class who is proudly a UFO activist. They promote and endorse some of the more fringe, conspiratorial, and lunatic corners of the UFO community. This baseless nonsense shouldn't be in schools. I stand by my pseudoscience statement. Grandstanding and pearl clutching? I get it. You can't lose your alien audience. Gotta thwack the knuckles of skeptics every once in a while to keep them interested. But letting a Lou Elizondo, Matt Ford, Chris Sharp fan teach school children about UFOs is concerning and something I'm going to call out. Oh, I didn't realize how long this went on for. Holy crap. Rough day, Stephen. By all means, call them if that's who they are. But don't stereotype everyone who does. And yes, you know you did. I mean, shoot, too, but you don't take over reading this. I, rough I to to <laughs> rough day, Stephen. Greenwald with the rare, like, <laughs> rough I'm telling day, you, this Steven. is the error report. This is the error report that got him feeling that whole, like, it's not just about 2017. This is the error report. Yes, yeah, Stephen Green Street. Wait, this years. got me fired up. Can I just say something? Yeah, yeah please. I am fired up. Please show my face. 
I want Stephen Greenstreet to see me when I say this, and I won't use curse words. Ooh. UFO Act. Can we? Can I read that tweet again? Okay, wait, let's get it. Here we go. Boom. UFO activists who endorses dubious charlatans and promotes pseudoscience should not be teaching school children about UFOs. So every teacher who's into crystals should be fired. If they want to teach them about UFOs, I think that's what he's saying. But even so, is that really that big of a deal? I think Green Street, as we both know, and look at this kind of mentioned a little bit earlier, like, to be okay? he's got Ooh. he's coming from a position of someone who left Green a very strict Walt, religion, Green Walt. Keep right? going, spread. I'm in the moment. At, yeah. Do you think you're going to be okay? Question mark. You seem upset. Don't puncture your palms <laughs> on those curls of yours. Just post your video again. It's been ten minutes. Are we done now. I'm almost about to take my son to soccer. Which video? The one John's always it? taking his Hell kid yeah, to bro, soccer. God I swear. <laughs> But some people had doubts. They noticed that something was off. Okay. Damn, I'm telling you, this is the air report, dude. Uh, I totally, I feel like, I feel like me and Alien get it with John. This one, like, it's like we're kind of like, dude, this harassment stuff in this community is garbage. But yeah, when the government's like, it's all fake, and you're all fake, then it's like, all right, let's let's go. Dude, I think we have to yes. get Green Street and Greenwald on the show, dude. I want to see, I want to see them talk this through. Like person Ooh, to person, I could. Twitter is so like trade jab Ooh. for jab, and then go finish your mocha or whatever, dude. It's like, I you like know, just idea. sit down and talk. I bet you, I bet you, at the end of the conversation, there's like a lot more common ground than differences. You know Shout out I mean? Pavel. He says Greenwald is a savage. Everyone go follow Pavel's <laughs> channel. He uh, he's gonna help bring Latin American ufology to America. I I had a vision about it. It's awesome. second that vision, and he's part of the big thing. A production over there with christian who uh, did i mean should we talk about it a little bit i mean maybe we'll talk about what happens but lou reviews is apparently gonna do a whole hit piece on a christian <laughs> should, or lou reviews. on who so on, lou uh, reviews lou reviews uh for those who don't know lou jimenez has been a host of multiple shows one amazing show that went with uh ufology back in the day when lou elizondo was getting started he was a frequent guest on a show called Unidentified Celebrity Review, UCR. I always forget that first word. So UCR went on for a while. They were doing a daily UFO sh channel when a lot of people weren't doing it. And so uh, that channel kind of like it had its heyday. And then there's a whole story about why it's not around anymore. But now lose back. We should probably do a whole episode on that at some point. We'll do. Yeah. For you guys, we'll do a whole episode. We'll catch you up to speed. The clips from this drama i mean it's fucking epic or it's epic right so then uh basically now lou reviews is doing a, or lou is doing a reviews channel and he constantly kind of craps on ufology and ufo researchers and ufo content creators and christian harloff is one of the nicest ones out there he used to have a, a channel focused on like movie and entertainment news i watched him all the time uh and now he's he's dipping his toes into the ufo community because he likes the topic he's fascinated with it and he's a good uh speaker right and he has a great channel so now they're they're doing their own uap ufo channel um and lou reviews is is bringing this up as he's a, got that green street bitterness he, he needs to listen to uh point. uh and tupo let's go ahead and just reread this again uh cool let's just read through it one time totally and then do you want me to be green street yeah, you be someone and i'll be someone i'll be green street since i'm siding with them okay cool uh, and I'm gonna have to zip out you guys in just a little bit. I gotta I think I reached my okay. uh -oh. time. I feel so bad though. No, no, no if you're, 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 you're right now, we're fine. We're just gonna read this and then uh hop off. Yeah. All right, cool, 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 cool. I've lectured at schools about history of UFOs to elementary classes, high schools, and college universities. I intertwine how the legal rights through FOIA has produced more of that history behind the topic, and those findings continue to show why it's an important one to discuss, not dismiss blindly. Most recently, I lectured for a class at the University of Richmond School of Law just about a week or two ago. Not sure about this lecture class, but I can say there is an important, interesting, and verifiably factual history to the topic of UFOs, if presented correctly. So if it is done right, a class taught and having a presentation about all this is incredibly valuable and worthwhile, on top of it being interesting. To dismiss that and label it all pseudoscience and pseudo-history is disingenuous at best. It also shows how little of an understanding there really is to that history. You shouldn't base it all on post-2017. I'm proud to speak to students about that history and will continue to do so. It isn't pushing an alien narrative, nor does it push pseudoscience or pseudo-history. It pushes the importance of actual research and the value of evidence. 
your grandstanding and pearl clutching notwithstanding uh this specific case involves someone teaching a high school class who is proudly a ufo activist they promote and endorse some of the more fringe conspiratorial and lunatic corners of the ufo community this baseless nonsense shouldn't be in schools i stand behind my pseudoscience statement Grandstanding and pearl clutching question mark laughing emoji. <laughs> or yawn. That's a yawn emoji. Dude. I, I think that's a, like the laughing. <clears throat> oh, like snickering. Okay, cool, cool. I get it. You can't lose your alien audience. Damn, this motherfucker's going. Gotta thwack the knuckles of skeptics every once in a while to keep them interested. But letting a Lou Elizondo, Matt Ford, Chris Sharp fan teach school children about UFOs is concerning and something I'm going to call out. Rough day, Stephen? By all means, call them out if that's who they are. But don't stereotype everyone who does. And yes, you know you did. UFO activists who endorse dubious charlatans and promote pseudoscience should not be teaching school children about UFOs. Cool. Did you know how I originally noted I have zero idea what the particular lecture lesson was about? But I spoke about the overall generalization of schools being taught the real history and focused on how I approach it. If you don't overly generalize, then don't. But it's clear that that's what we see all around your post, and it's silly to do so. So in that respect, I reserve the right to call out the same level of BS. Damn, dude, go for it. Okay, in quotes, to dismiss this is a novella. that. This is, this is wild. To dismiss that and label it a pseudoscience history lesson, but disingenuous at best, that in in of itself is disingenuous. But whatevs. I said above that UFO fanatics who promote wild conspiracies, anti-government sentiment, and pseudoscience shouldn't be teaching school kids about UFOs, and I stand by that. You decided it was best to wax poetic about your scholarly UFO lectures from days of your Yas Queen slay. I, I'm actually pissed that Green Street made me read that out loud, so go ahead. Do you think you're going to be okay? You seem upset. Don't puncture your palms on those pearls of yours. Just post your video again. It's been 10 minutes. We done now? I'm almost about to take my kid to soccer. Which video? The one with you in it? Hell yeah, bro. I got you. I think that's the end of it. Oh, look at Pepper's right there. Oh, yeah. He just <laughs> Pepper's, <got her> right. <laughs> Pepper's in the oh, chat right now. Say what's gosh. up to Pepper, dude. All right. So I think that's the show for today, guys. Uh, you, uh, yeah, usually they're on those guys are on the same page. I hope they're, uh, I hope that was just kind of like a, a friendly kind of jab thing, but uh, they, they were classy about it. They were kind of going ham, but I think, I think they kept it above, above like the, the, the gutter. So they both that. live for it. Let's be honest. So true. Dude. They so both true. tend to do. They both love it. They, they yeah. live for it. They love it. And we love it too. <laughs> and, uh, okay. Um, I love it too. Great show, everyone. Uh, like Heather Birdie says in the chat, like, subscribe, become a member. Everybody, yeah. everybody who's in the chat, go like it right now. Please. And comment on so it much. as soon as it's done. And go follow Alien Girl in the description. And we already posted a, uh, we posted her up in this chat if you just scroll up a little bit. Uh, yeah, the, the best Thanks, UFO guys. morning show out there. All right, the best UFO morning show. If that's your thing, if you're a morning person, you got to give her a follow, man. Put those notifications. Yeah, you guys got to go check it out. It's Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We go live every morning. We're going jumping into it. We get those conspiracy theories. We go right at it. Yeah, just Start go your day for it. Right. And we got we got all sorts of things coming out. Like I got my UFO Twitter documentary coming out. Hmm. I got an interview with Tom Reed. I'm editing down, getting that out there. Help when is that UFO Richard Twitter to... documentary coming out? And I'm so sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. You're my... sorry. May fifth. <laughs> it's to... like it's not going to be that exciting. I've really amped it up. You guys, like you guys, come watch it. Be like that was cool. You know, like one of those. Like, don't... oh, we're going to report not... on that. <laughs> I mean, I and now I'm set up happens. to stream stuff too, so I'm totally down to come on and stuff. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, Absolutely. so that's gonna be like a huge party because I'm thinking about like creatively growing in a new way. I don't know, whatever. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. I love that. <laughs> I don't know. That's kind of the idea behind doing it. It's like, okay, let's do something big and epic and encapsulate everything, and then like tweak everything a little bit differently. Anyway, I don't know. Whatever. I love it. And then we're working with the Richard... next kind of thing. Kind yeah, of thing. yeah. Let's and I'm working with this. Dolan. And I'm doing some stuff with some virtual conference. I'm interviewing Vinny Adams this weekend. I got my Tom Reed oh, interview oh, coming nice. out. I don't know. I got all sorts of things. We're blowing up, just like you guys. Hell yeah. We're all blowing up together. <laughs> Love Dude, we're blowing up ufology together. We're getting out to the masses. Straight to the top. Absolutely, yes. man. We're getting out to you guys. I mean, this shit is awesome. Uh, yes. Alien well, Girl, thanks again. Red, thank you guys so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, guys. Everybody watching the chat, thank you so much. That's the show, y'all. Until tomorrow.
Till tomorrow. Bye, everyone. Bye. Peace. Bye, Bye guys. Thank you. Bye. All right.